Transmission by Tim Maughan. The lines snake out of the station and up Electric Avenue so that everybody has to step over the bodies in the street, not knowing if they're dead or just sleeping or whether that's urine or sick or blood that's matted their cardboard mattresses to the pavement. Maya's been here since before eight, easily, and the itch is getting to her. All around her neck and up past her ears to her scalp as she watches people pass. God knows what they might be carrying. But she can't scratch it because even with her gloves on, she might break the second skin. Instead, she clenches her teeth behind the breather, inhales that stale smell of rubber and the sickly, chemically menthol, stale, perfumed antiseptic spray she used to wash it out this morning and waits wishing she was indoors, always wishing she was indoors. It's stupid hot today, of course. Too stupid hot to be stood around on Electric Avenue in a second skin, stepping over might-be-dead homeless guys and waiting for a train, when she could be sat inside in front of an electric fan, drinking liquid ibuprofen and hoping it doesn't make her too constipated. She laughs silently to herself. Last day, she'll have to worry about that. The splitting the lines into two at the bottom of the stairs... She gets pulled out into the second, much faster line straight away because anybody even asked to see her paperwork. Nobody. Just because she's wearing this second skin and breather. Her line's faster because, well, it's Brixton. Not many people around here with green clearance and money for fresh skins. Correction, not many people around here with green clearance and money for fresh skins who need to leave the house often. Plenty around here with money, but all they got were jobs where they can work at home now, get their kids homeschooled by bots and MOOCs, have their food delivered and can probably print most other stuff they need. She remembers her time in the other line, trudging out to the Amazon warehouse in Slough, where they'd strap her into a bulky hazmat suit before they'd let her fulfil any orders for the nice, clean homeworkers. Even though she had legit green status. Fully to death. Nervously, with gloved fingers, she grasps the medical clearance card in her hoodie pocket. She's never got her head around the hypercritical logic of the checkpoints. Over in the other line, the commuters are being made to take off their flimsy grain paper masks, along with anything else they've wrapped around their heads, hoping for protection, scarves, bandages. This one guy is wearing some cracked old plastic swimming goggles. Off it all comes, just so the checkpoint cameras can have a look at their faces, and the NHS networks can track where everyone goes and can build their pretty, precious, pointless infection spread models. At the same time, here in her quick-moving queue, everyone is just getting waved through. Even though their faces are completely unscannable, utterly hidden from any human or machine sight by the sealed second skin and the breather. Taking them off outside of home, breaking the seal, especially down here in this germ pit of a tube station, would defeat the point of wearing them in the first place. So wearing one is enough that the rules do not apply to you. Plus, of course, anyone who can afford them just has to be clean anyway. Butterflies in her stomach. She fumbles the green clearance card out of her pocket, nearly drops it, holds it up, but the TFL worker on the checkpoint barely glances at it through the scuffed plexiglass of his hazmat suit as he waves her through. Stockwell, 9.35 a.m. The ride to Stockwell from Brixton used to take eight minutes tops, her mum always said. Apparently, it was still that quick when she was a kid. This morning, it's been at least half an hour. The train constantly stopping and starting in the tunnel. Automated voices telling them it's because of congestion on the line. Transport for London apologises for delays to your journey. This is due to NHS medical safety checkpoints. 
for everyone's benefit, always remember to carry a medical clearance card. Help Transport for London avoid infection snarl. Travelling without proper medical status paperwork is a crime. The announcements seem extra clinical, extra loud in this motionless surreality of the near empty green clearance carriage, no bodies to suck up the sound. The only passengers in here are half a dozen second skin wearers sitting silently like posed faceless mannequins in this season's designer fashions. Unseen eyes gazing at tablets and phones sealed airtight in Ziploc bags. Maya has no screen to stare at, no notifications to check. Her phone stays in her pocket, naked and unprotected. Instead, she sees her kitchen at home and the testing kit on the table, the envelope full of documents, the money. Paul, sobbing quietly in his hazmat suit, his gloved hand in hers. She hears herself calming him down. He wants to rip the suit off to be naked with her. Are you sure you really want to do this? Nodding. We always said we would, right? When the time came? She feels a tear she can't wipe away, seep between two skins. London Bridge, 10.50 a.m. Maya emerges into daylight, squinting through the thin second skin membrane and fights the urge to rip off the breather and taste the air. From here, the shard doesn't so much dominate the skyline as consume it like a giant blade has slit open the sky to reveal secret steel and glass scaffolding holding reality together. She gets in easier and quicker than she feared. There are no lines, nobody queuing to leave or enter this sealed vertical city within a city. The security here in ornate uniforms at least look at her clearance card and residence pass, but they say nothing. Not once questioning her. Instead they smile and motion for her to step through the body scanner. She's not carrying the kind of weapons it's looking for and triggers nothing but green lights and soft chimes and the guards smile again, call her name by a name that isn't hers and wish her a good day. Through the revolving airlock and into this pristine, infection-free foyer, a sterile oasis within the city of plagues. Apart from a few residents leaving or entering, nobody wears a second skin here. Safe to dress as they wish in their sanitized bubble world. Maya keeps hers on, avoiding uncaring gazes again, guilt and fear, replaced this time by anger and hatred. By the lift she waits, awkward and self-conscious until she can have a car to herself. She thumbs the button for the restaurant and shops level 32nd floor, time to hit the brunch rush. As the lift gently but quickly rises, she takes her phone from her pocket and affixes it to a mirrored wall. Softly muffled by the breather, she tells it to start streaming and begins to undress. By the 12.4, her hoodie has come off and lies by her feet. By the 16th, her jeans have joined it. She's removed her shoes by the 21st. Between 23 and 24, she takes the breather from her mouth and takes in lungfuls of pristine, perfumed air with a desperate relief. She coughs grey mucus spatter on the mirror, narrowly missing the phone's lens. At the 26th floor, she starts to rip away the second skin. Starting from her head, working her way down, she tears at it slowly at first, exposing fever damp patches of freshly shaved scalp. But then the impatience and the frustrations and the fear and the hatred all get too much for her and she yells, ripping the artificial membrane away in cathartic self-violence. By the 28th floor, she stands naked in the mirror. 
Her skin is an alien landscape, even to her. Death pale deserts split apart by the volcanic flows of engorged blood vessels. Matrices of rash and cracked flaking flesh spread across her chest and back like shattered maps of dead cities. Her limbs swell and seep with unhealed bruising and infected abrasions. For the last time, she resists the temptation to scratch. Twisted pride and anger, holding back fingers that want to rip away this skin too. At the 30th floor, she looks into the camera lens and speaks. My name is Maya Andrews. I speak for the poor and forgotten of London. I'm here to represent the thousands of us that will die in this city today. I bring our suffering, our pain, our infections to those who have forsaken us. I bring our disease and our pain and our death to share with those who have sealed themselves away. I bring equality. At the 32nd floor, the lift chimes. Maya turns. The doors slide open. And the crowds outside start to scream. Thank you.